Hello beautiful people, I'm Raish Phoenix, and in today's video I will be showing you guys how I turned this sketch into this line work drawing. If you'd like to see, just keep watching. Alright, so let me get straight into why I'm drawing Doja Cat. I, first of all, shout out to my friend Ashi Mustashi because she's the one who put me on to Doja Cat to begin with. I think she had mentioned her a couple months prior to me actually taking the time and effort to look into Doja Cat and then after I discovered her I was just like she's dope so shout out to Ashi Musashi she's also like a really dope artist and you know check out her work she's on Instagram she's on YouTube check her out y'all but the reason why I decided to draw Doja Cat is because first of all Doja Cat is I just love how much of a goofball she is, honestly. If you follow her on Instagram and you see like the stories that she posts and even like the stuff she posts on her timeline, she'll like do these very derpy things and <laughs> make very derpy faces. And there's a part of me that really enjoys and loves that because I feel like it's very easy to, even like especially as a woman in any position where you have a lot of eyes on you, I think it's very easy to get caught up in what you have to look like and always being perfect and always kind of giving off this persona of having it all together, kind of feeding into what everybody else wants you to be. But I love that Doja Cat is able to make the music that she does and at the same time not lose like that silly side of herself and to still show it and to be unapologetic about that. From a creative standpoint, her music is... So let me um, say like, I haven't backtracked that much. Like I've listened to probably one track off of her last album, not the one she recently put out, not, um, not Hot Pink, but the album that she had um, released previous to that like i'm i'm not even gonna lie i'm one of those people that like discovers an artist and then when they discover the artist they listen to the track that helped them get discovered and discovering <laughs> done. i listen to every track or record that she releases after that so pretty much i started with like moo and i started with tia tamara and go to town and then from there like when she released hot pink i was just like oh shit because like I pretty much love every song on Hot Pink and once I started listening to that entire album on repeat like I knew like all right I, I gotta draw Doja Cat like that was the moment where I was just like all right this has to happen and also another thing is like I just love her visuals for her music videos like for Tia Tamara I loved that for um Go to Town that was pretty dope the aesthetic of it and the colors and recently like seeing um cyber sex and rules of course <laughs> um seeing those two like that was really like what won me over because on top of like just her being her and being amazing um i love the sounds that she uses in her music her music is very reminiscent to kind of like video games that I play. The video games that I would play like um, Tekken 4. So Tekken 4 is like one of my favorite Tekkens because I still listen to music from that video game and there, I don't know how to describe it, but there are certain sound effects that are used in, in that video game in Tekken. Sometimes I feel like I hear those sounds in Doja Cat's like music and I'm just like, hold up, wait a second, like what? <laughs> and there are moments where I like, I feel like I hear some of like we love Katamari type of sounds and once you start like having sounds like that that remind me of video games like that that kind of that kind of wins me over just a little bit <laughs> and then on top of that like I said like the visuals for her music videos like I loved rules and even cyber sex with that music video I loved man like her outfits and just her delivery like I love how she delivers what she's saying I love the expression on her face I love I don't know I could go on and on about all the things I love but this is why I'm drawing Doja Cat I ended up deciding to draw this outfit from the music video rules because first of all I love the color purple and there are certain purples that make me very happy and the shade of this purple in the music video is the type of shade that makes me very happy you know it's kind of like neonish but not I don't know, it's just like a vibrant, neonish purple situation. Like, I, I don't know how to describe it, but 
y'all see it y'all y'all see the color right there <laughs> but i love the shade of this purple and then on top of that i love things that are very like reminiscent to corsets or to um shibari like that is so dope to me so once i saw this outfit it's like i instantly fell in love i was just like this this is it like i have to draw this and boy i put in a lot of work for myself because <laughs> when i decided that i was gonna draw this outfit i was just like girl you ready like you you finna draw all these straps like are you ready and i was just like well i love it so i guess i gotta do it <laughs> But yeah, there were other moments where I started thinking about if I should draw the white outfit that she had in cyber sex when she was kind of being like a little scientist and um, putting together her perfect man, if you will. But um, yeah, like I, I don't know, the purple won me over, so I ended up doing this outfit instead. The day that I ended up starting this illustration, I can't really recall where my mind was at in terms of how I ended up coming up with this pose. It was kind of instinctual. For a very long time, I had already known that I wanted to draw Doja Cat because once I started listening to Hot Pink on repeat, I was just like, all right, like, this is it, I'ma do it, <laughs> right? And then once I kind of got to a point where I was just like, okay, like, now I really have to start materializing and actually start like applying action to thought, you know? I I remember I was in my room and I mean, where else am I? I'm always in my room, but anyway, I was in my room and I kind of had this moment where I got up and I kind of started to physically think of the pose I wanted to do and kind of like instinctually, I was just like, all right, we're licking the hand, you know, because she's Doja Cat. And if you see a lot of the photos that she takes, she does poses like this where she like literally has like a little meow moment, you know? So it was kind of like instinctual for me to do this pose. So I ended up taking a picture of myself and using that as reference and then I combined like the photo of myself and looking at photos of hers and make sure that I got the body type right as you guys can see just looking at the um the outfit from the music video and just putting everything together. The most difficult part of bringing this illustration to life was definitely um well, there were a couple challenging parts. So the first thing was actually drawing the pose in the way that I wanted it to be drawn because I wanted it to kind of be like a, a low perspective. So like you're on the ground kind of area and then you're looking up at her. So I wanted to play with um, perspective. And then on top of that, like that was tricky. For That, that was so difficult because I don't do poses like this a lot, but this is definitely another thing I want to improve on. I don't, I don't know, like I'm still understanding anatomy, so it's difficult for me to do something from a specific perspective or do foreshortening when I'm still trying to understand anatomy. So when I was doing this, it was very tricky at first. I found a lot of moments where I was like, all right, like I just need to take a break from this and then come back in a couple of minutes or maybe a couple of days because I couldn't wrap my head around how to get the body type right. And on top of that, make sure the perspective was okay. But then after a while, it kind of, I don't know, it kind of instinctually hit me how to size things. And then that was when it made sense to me. So kind of like the steps that I did was that I drew the pose and then after I drew the pose, I drew the body. So just getting the body type right. And then after I got the body type right, I kind of scaled everything like her legs and her torso and her head. I scaled them separately so that I would get the perspective that I was going for. And then pretty much after I had the sketch done of her body, that's when I drew in the clothes and went pretty much in with the details in that aspect. But I'd say the most difficult thing in this entire, I don't know if I could say it's the most difficult thing, but it's up there on the difficult scale, was drawing all of the straps. I want to say it's not specifically drawing the strap that's difficult, it's drawing the strap in a way that is convincing for the body part that it's on, you know, because I can't draw a straight line literally from like left to right on her leg and then still convey mass. Like 
I have to make sure that when I draw the strap, it is hugging the contour of whatever body part it is on. So if it's on her upper thigh, it has to curve like her upper thigh. If it's getting close towards her knee, it has to curve like it's going closer towards her knee. So that was kind of the part that tripped me out a little bit. On top of that, just figuring out kind of like how the straps are strapped, <laughs> kind of like what side of the strap is overlapping what other side or how's it doing what it's doing, you know? So that was challenging. I think I can definitely say I figured that more out during the line work phase because the sketch phase was kind of just like putting it down there and then the line work phase is when everything came full circle for me. I don't know if you guys can tell yet, but I'm definitely working on more than one piece at the same damn time right now. And something I've been appreciating about working on multiple pieces at once is that at first in the beginning, like when I was still figuring out my style like earlier in this year, or not even just figuring out my style, I was kind of like figuring out where it's going next and kind of being in this weird gap area of knowing that I'm growing but not knowing where it's gonna end up. When I was in that little gap area, it was kind of like I was starting pieces and not finishing it because I didn't have much direction for where I wanted to go. So that was a time where it was a bit more tricky. But now that I have a better sense of direction in terms of my process and it, like starting a sketch and then going to line work and then grayscale and all, color after that, like now that I have a better understanding of those things, it's easier for me to bounce around between pieces because something I'm noticing is that it helps with me taking a break from a particular piece. So when I start getting overwhelmed by let's say like the straps in this piece, I can go to one of my other pieces and start working on a different part of that illustration. And by the time I come back to this piece and I start working on the straps again, it doesn't feel so overwhelming because I was able to take that break there where it feels like I'm coming back with a fresh mindset. And I've also noticed this where there are parts of an illustration that will be very overwhelming for me. Like I kind of won't know how to simplify a specific part or I won't know how I want to visually express it. So when I take that break and I work on another piece, it helps me come back with fresh eyes to be able to figure out how I want to finish it. On top of that, I've noticed that I kind of have these moments where I get a little impatient about where I am in certain parts. Like I may be working on the sketch or the line work, but I really just want to get to the color. So with working on multiple pieces at once, it helps to have a piece where I'm working on the grayscale and another piece where I'm on the line work and another piece where I'm on the color because I'm able to kind of go in between different parts of my process and work on that. So when I come back to the piece that's still at the line work, I can be like, all right, like at least I got the color done in some other piece. So I can get all that, like, I don't know, like that color vibe that I want out on some other piece and then I can come back to the line work and finish it and get it closer to where I want it to be. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Bless up and until next time, sending out much peace, love and enlightenment. Bye guys. Thank you.